How's it going guys? It's Saturday, one o'clock-ish, back out in the garage, got myself some gasket material to make, let's move these, my tops, which we could do two ways, we could do it the way I was shown years ago, like I made the last set, you just put it here, and you actually tap it with a ball peen hammer, and it cuts it like a knife. And you trace down and do your other four holes or we're going to get something that's two and a quarter inches and press it with a press which is probably what i'm going to do at that point so i don't need it today so we'll put that over there i got my self-etching primer i got primer i got my texture agent i got my paint we're good to go i got myself i can't believe i bought a scotch bright pad i got a stack of these in my box at work got some 220 paper got some 320 paper still got my 80 we're good there. Uh, my CD player took a dump, so we're, <laughs> we're we're cleaning the head on the uh, the good old realistic eight track player. So, uh, it's weird. Uh, so we'll put some of those tapes on. I just want to show you guys this. this is something I picked up yesterday. I went into like one of those antique mall places. This one right here is November. Set it somewhere in there. November 66. Superstock magazine. So I like looking at the original pictures. Not the redone cars. So this is cool. Chassis and suspension and brakes. Okay, this thing is from October 7th of 1969. It's a nice thick book. This goes over everything. Back in the day style, of course. <laughs> goes over tires, you know, brakes, disc brake setups. Shows you how to do a wheel alignment. Shows you the different steering boxes and recirculating balls and all the good stuff. And that four shocks in the back. Who knows why? I've never read it. All different types of leaf springs. Definitely an interesting book. Definitely an interesting book. Uh, I got a November of 68, popular hot rodding, so that's pretty cool, and I got an April of 67 hot rod magazine, talking about gas of front ends and things like that, that's a nice thick one, so I only paid a couple of bucks a piece for these, so I had to grab them, so well, with that, I think we're going to switch to some music, let's get this thing out of here. I think we'll listen to the boss. How's that? My number one light doesn't work. Okay, guys. Who would have ever thought that the 8-track play would be the most reliable thing of all the electronics? So, let's... Oh, it sounds like I'm getting two channels there. But I got a matchbook. Not there. Okay, guys. Let's get to work before everything burns. There you go, guys. I stripped that with 80 to get the majority off. Then I went to uh, 220, 320. And then I made sure I got every single nook and cranny with a screwdriver and a scotch bright pad. So we got the top masked off. Got the flanges masked off. So I already wiped it and touched it with my hands. So should be good to go. I'm gonna hit that with a coat or two. Some self felt Couldn't get it out. Some self etching primer. You wear the respirator too long around your mouth and it just doesn't work anymore. So, got the car covered <laughs> again. So with that, let me go get the self-fetching primer. It's in the house. Everything's been in the house. Keep it warm. So, it's only 16 here. I mean, which is good considering it's like, I don't know, maybe 20 outside right now. So. Okay guys, still got my respirator on. I gave it three very light coats. Covered. 
of uh, here's what I used. So claims it's good for aluminum, steel, some stainless steel. So it says you gotta wait an hour before you do anything with it. Being it's not 80 degrees out, uh, I'll give it a, a couple hours. And uh, we'll move on. And we'll let this thing set up overnight. So I think it looks good. Looks good just like that. I like that color. But we're gonna make it look better. So that's it guys, I'm taking a break. Well it's been a couple hours. Definitely pleased. Definitely pleased. Okay, let's keep working. Okay guys, very light coat for coat one. Can you see the texture? That's why I texture it. So more paint you put on, the more it'll fade away, but this is that nice texture like you expect to see. So give this like five, ten minutes, and we'll hit it up again. Go to still retaining the texture. So, this should do good. I'll let this sit a little bit and we're gonna give one more coat. And that should be it. Then we'll let this one sit. And we'll do the top. So well, it's still wet. It's going to be wet for a while. This is what we saw it with. So. I think it's the same color. It was the same cane. So, like I said, it has to dry down. All the sheen is trying the same. So. The texture stayed nice. See the texture on it? Which makes it... I'm not going to say it doesn't look painted. Of course it's painted. But it looks... I think it looks better. So last time I did this, I experimented both ways with or without the texture. And I didn't look like crap without the texture. So... And the texture doesn't seem to have a problem with the heat because the texture is not yet failed and it never failed one bit on the valve covers and I, I don't know how many times I've had those off so where the screws were never failed it never flaked anywhere with these screws on when I tightened it so so it seems to be decent stuff hopefully with that uh, self etching primer we do a little better this time so in the scuffing so there was a little light on the scuffing on that on that rib so that's all we're doing for today that's enough this is already like a six hour day believe it or not